All right, what's up everybody? I just wanted to give you a quick update on the uh, weekly progress of Eleventy. So the last week I've been pretty heads down on um, the development server. So we're working on a new development server for Eleventy. And the reason we're doing that is um, if you install Eleventy from scratch right now, and for the past I don't know, couple weeks, uh, there are NPM high security audits that come back. There was very little production risk that came from those because 11D is a build server, and those came from our browser sync dependency. Um, so if you're running 11D in a CI server, uh, you aren't running browser stack in production or browser excuse me browser sync in production. And even in a serverless mode, we don't bundle the browser sync dependency in there because it's just it was too big. And so um, if you have serverless bundles, it doesn't get included. Um, but just from a beginner's perspective, I thought it was good for the project um, to have a better uh, beginner experience. So when you install Eleventy, there should be zero NPM security audits that come back, obviously. Um, so that's why we're stripping browser sync out right now um, and moving forward with a new development server for Eleventy. Um, and with that, we're going to get some cool new features, and I'll talk to you about some of them. Uh, that I've already developed and we're already ready to go. Um, and we're very close to having um, having something available for wider public testing as well. So here's how it looks when you start up just the very first project uh, development server. I have just a sample project running on my local host, which is actually using my local copy of 11D. Uh, once I get all the development done, I'll be able to publish it up. Uh, for other people to use, but that's what we're going with with this demo this week. Um, so yeah, start it up just in serve mode. Um, there's just one dependency, so the development server is going to get bundled as a dependency in 11D, so you don't have to install anything separately. I thought that was very uh, important for a beginner as well. We want the development server experience to be bundled in, so you don't have to do a bunch of extra work to get live reload. Um, so yeah, this is what it looks like, very simple. Uh, it gives you the production URL with the port. Um, if it doesn't work on this port, it works the same as Browser Sync did before. It will increment to the next port. I think it retries 10, 10 different times to find a port that works. Uh, and this is configurable as well. Um, so yeah, let's look at what, what the page looks like. Right now there's nothing on this document. Uh, if you go to my index file, there's no content here. Uh, and the important thing I wanted to share here, one of the limitations we had with Browser Sync before uh, was that it required a body tag to exist on your page for live reload to work. And this was very confusing for a lot of beginners that would come in, try and create a markdown file, uh, which doesn't have a proper HTML structure. Uh, and so that was kind of the wrong time to educate folks how to um, work with 11D uh, because live reload wouldn't work on markdown files until you added a layout. Well, it's just very confusing. And we actually have a warning about that on our docs as well. Um, with the new server, this is no longer necessary. Um, so you can, uh, it will inject the, the reloading client script uh, whether or not you have a document or a, a body uh, in your tag. And you don't even need valid HTML for that to be injected now either. Um, I think a valid HTML file requires a title, um, but this actually works with empty documents as well, completely empty. Um, so yeah, very important uh, a beginner improvement there. Um, another thing that I wanted to sort of fix up a little bit, I wrote this article about trailing slashes and different Jamstack providers, uh, working off the great research done by Sebastian Lorber here. Um, and I wanted to have the development server sort of match some of these same production conventions that you'll see. Um, and so I just created this test.html file with a bunch of sample content in it. Uh, and let's look at what it looks like when you go to this, this URL without a trailing slash. Uh, it will actually redirect to the to add the trailing slash, same as, as uh, the prevailing number of Jamstack hosts do. Um, and it works uh, the other way as well. If you have just a test.html file in production, this one, 11D's 
standard convention is to create a test slash index.html file. But if you change your permalink here, permalink uh, test2.html, um, that will create a new uh, URL here. You can see test2 works the same. But if we don't have a trailing slash on that, it will just return the same document, um, which is, again, a convention across a bunch of different Jamstack providers. Um, and that's what you want. All right, so again, we want to match as many of those existing conventions in production as we can on development mode. Um, yeah, because we want those to match up as much as possible, and it uh, eliminates as much confusion as we can after deployment. Uh, the client script, importantly, is injected without modifying any of your build output. Um, that's sort of a table stakes requirement that we needed. We don't want any of the build output to be modified. Um, so your your 11 build stays the same without any extra client-side JavaScript injected. We decreased the size of the client script quite a bit. Browser syncs was about 176 kilobyte uh, on every page load. So it was pretty big, pretty hefty. Uh, now we have about uh, five kilobyte here. Let's reload just so I can show you. Yeah, about five kilobyte on this one. Um, it's using WebSockets to do the, all the live reload stuff. Uh, importantly, it's also used on error pages as well. So if I have a missing uh, 404 here, and then I create, uh, this missing file it will actually reload the error page uh, to show me the content. So even the error pages have the live reloading built in. Um, and yeah, that's important so you don't have to do any manual refreshes. Another feature I felt like was table stakes to bring over from browser sync was um, the live reloading CSS. So you can kind of see the CSS request is made, but it doesn't uh, request uh, the top level page uh, and doesn't do a full page reload. Um, all right, another thing that we added here is actually a DOM diffing library. Um, and this only gets loaded when you use it or when it's required. We don't always use the DOM diffing library to apply updates, but it's pretty neat. Um, you can actually modify injected um, styles and they'll be applied without doing a full page reload. Um, and this works for a lot of things. Um, so just as an example, let me put some state onto this form element um, and then let's modify some HTML. It maintains that state. We're not doing any full page refreshes. Uh, and the DOM diffing library is figuring out when to, uh, when and where to apply the HTML updates to the page. Pretty cool. Um, yeah, just for, makes for a great development experience um, without any full page reloads here. We will keep the same uh, features that you would have expected from the development server before. Path prefix, if you wanted to add um, a base directory to your site, that will still work moving forward. Um, it will work in serverless mode. So I have a serverless uh, a serverless route already set up here, um, and that will reload how you'd expect as well. Um, and this is, you can see the serverless URL generated here. Um, oh, another cool thing that uh, I wanted to demo is, let me just go back to the home page here. If you have a build error, so we're using a short code here, this doesn't yet exist. If you have a build error, it will actually log it to your client side um, console. So I know a lot of folks will work in their browser uh, and they'll be confused because they aren't looking at their terminal output here. Um, and so if that's, if that's the use case that you normally go through, um, you may not have seen a build error come back um, so the 11D um, reload client will now show you your build errors in your console logs as well, um, which I think is pretty nice.
Um, another thing you can do is you can actually disable the reload client JavaScript uh, being injected here. If you set enable to false, it will bypass the snippet. Um, so you won't see any live reloading script trying to be injected here. There's nothing, no JavaScript at all. And I also made it work so you can use HTTPS on your local host. Uh, I know a lot of folks use this feature and we wanted to keep it moving forward as well, obviously. Um, it will try and use HTTPS. If your key or cert don't match, then it will fall back to HTTP. Um, I didn't want HTTPS to be the default because you do have to go through some extra setup to generate a key and a certificate. Um, there's no great way to completely automate that away. Um, and so I want the beginner experience to be as seamless as possible. Um, if you want to generate a key and a certificate, you can do that and use uh, those to um, have a secure server. And you notice it changes the um, HTTPS uh, URL here on the console. Uh, now we have the nice padlock. Uh, I know I'm aware of this console uh, log that's coming from the final handler dependency. I'm hoping to get that fixed upstream. And another thing you can do is set this show all hosts option to true, and that will also log out your IP addresses. Um, if you want to use those for um, mobile testing on your local network, those are the IP addresses you'll need to use to connect. And yeah, that's kind of it for now. There are a couple more tricks that uh, are kind of up my sleeve and I'm hoping to cook up here in the next day or two. Um, but the development server is looking real good. It's uh, very small, not very many external dependencies, um, and importantly, no NPM security audits on the console uh, when you install it. So um, the big limitation here is that we will need to bump to another major version of 11D to use this. Um, now folks will have an easy escape hatch if you relied on browser sync previously. Um, we will have an adapter to use browser sync if you're okay with those NPM audits on your local host. If you want to make that trade off, um, you can keep using browser sync moving forward. Um, but the default experience will be moving to this 11.2.0. I know it's not ideal um, to have a major version bump so quick after we did the previous 1.0, but this will be the only breaking change that goes into this release. Um, so there won't be a ton of migration unless you had a lot of deep uh, browser sync integration in your tool chain. And if that's true, let me know. Um, let me know if you are having issues because I want to hear about it. And I want to make sure that our browser sync escape hatch that we're going to have moving forward uh, will work for you in the meantime until you're able to get things uh, ported over. Or if you want to just keep using browser sync moving forward, that's an option to you as well. All right. I uh, hope you all enjoyed that, that little demo and uh, look forward to um, the stable release to try it out. Thanks y'all.